Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Students, what if you are in a situation in which somebody messes up with a certain thing of yours and you are not able to say no because you are too polite to do so? In this chapter, A Bicycle in Good Repair, the author Jerome K. Jerome finds himself in such a situation. What is the situation? Let's read in the story A Bicycle in Good Repair, Chapter 9 of Class 7th. Before you read, if you wish to go on a long bicycle ride, the bicycle should be in good condition. If possible, an expert mechanic should overhaul it. Overhaul means maintain or service it. But what happens if the machine has a will of its own and the mechanic knows next to nothing? So if you want to go on a bicycle ride, you should get the machine checked. And if possible, a mechanic should service it. But what if the machine has a certain way of working and also the mechanic who is checking it knows nothing. Let's see and read the story. A man I knew proposed one evening we should go for a long bicycle ride together on the following day and I agreed. I got up early for me, I made an effort and was pleased with myself. He came half an hour late. I was waiting for him in the garden. It was a lovely day. He said, that's a good looking machine of yours. How does it run? So the author says that once a person he knew proposed to him that next day we should go for a long bicycle ride and the author agreed and he got up early next morning. He said that I got up early for me. That means he was not an early riser. He got up early next morning. He made an effort to got up, get up early and he was happy with himself and the person came half an hour late. Then the author was waiting for him in the garden and he sa says that it was a lovely day. And as soon as the person saw the author's bicycle, he said, it's a good looking machine of yours. How does it run? He asked the narrator, the author that. Oh, like most of them, I answered. Easily enough in the morning, goes a little stiffy after lunch. Stiffy means hard or difficult to move. And the author replied that it is like most of the other machines. It goes smooth in the morning and becomes a little stiff, a little hard after lunch. He caught hold of it by the front wheel and the fork and shook it violently. I said, don't do that. You will hurt it. I did not see why he should shake it. It had not done anything to him. Besides, if it wanted shaking, I was the proper person to shake it. I felt much as I should had he started whacking my dog. Whacking means beating or striking. So the person got hold of narrator's bicycle from the front wheel and folk and he started shaking it in a very violent manner and the author says don't do that you will hurt the machine and the author could not understand why he started shaking it because the bicycle had done nothing to him it was just lying there quietly besides the narrator thought that if somebody has to shake the bicycle it should be he himself and he felt as if he felt the same thing uh, if, uh, that he would have felt if somebody had started hitting his dog. He said, this front wheel wobbles. Wobbles means shakes or moves unsteadily from side to side. So he said that this front wheel of your cycle, it shakes. I said, it doesn't if you don't wobble it. It didn't wobble. As a matter of fact, nothing worth calling a wobble. The narrator said that if you don't shake it, if you don't move it, it will not shake. As a matter of fact, there is nothing in it which can be called wobbling or shaking. He said, this is dangerous. Have you got a hammer? I ought to have been firm, but I thought that perhaps he really did know something about the business. And the narrator said that I should have been firm. I should have said no, but I just thought that he knows something about the business, the business of repairing cycle. So when the person asked for a hammer, the narrator could not say no. I went to the tool shed to see what I could find. When I came back, he was sitting on the ground with the front wheel between his legs. So the narrator went inside and he came with a hammer. And when he came back, he saw that uh, the person was sitting on the ground and the wheel of the cycle was between his legs. He was playing with it, twiddling it around. Twiddling means turning it between his fingers. The remnant of the machine, remnant means remaining part of the machine, were laying on the gravel path beside him. Gravel means pebbly path, pebbled path. 
So the narrator went inside and when he came back with whatever he could find, he saw that the front wheel of the machine was between the between that person's leg and he was playing with it by turning it around uh, and uh, putting his fingers between it and the rest of the part of the machine was laying on that pebbled path laying on the ground which was next to him. He said, it looks to me as if the bearings were all wrong. Bearing means ball bearing of cycles. In cycles, there are ball bearings, small balls. And he said that it looks as if uh, the bearings were all placed at the wrong place. I said, don't you trouble about it anymore. You will make yourself tired. Let us put it back and get off. So in order to avoid him, the narrator said that don't trouble yourself uh, with this machine. You will make yourself tired. And let's put the wheel back and get off. Go for a ride. He said, we may as well see what is the matter with it. Now it is out. He talked as though it had dropped out by accident. And the person said that uh, we can also see what is wrong. What is the matter with the cycle now since we have taken it out. And he was saying as if uh, uh, the wheel had dropped by itself. He has not taken it out. It has dropped by accident. Before I could stop him, he had unscrewed something somewhere and out rolled all over the path some dozens or so little balls. So before the narrator could stop him, he had unscrewed, he has opened all the screws, something somewhere were laying, they were rolling and all the balls uh, of the cycle were rolling on the path next to him. Catch them, he shouted, catch them, we mustn't lose any of them. He was quite excited about them and he just shouted catch them catch the balls because we should not lose any of the balls he was saying it in a lot of excitement he groveled round for half an hour groveled means crawled on the ground and found 16 so he crawled on the ground to find the balls and he found 16 of them he said he hoped we had got them all because if not it would make a serious difference to the machine i put them for safety in my hat it was not a sensible thing to do, I admit. So the person said that uh, we should not lose any of the balls and he uh, crawled on the ground to search them and he found some of them and he said that I hope we have found them all because if, if we have not found them, it will seriously make a difference to the machine. And the narrator put all the uh, balls in his hat in order to be to keep them safe and he felt that uh, it, it was not a sensible thing to do. That means it was not sensible to lose the balls. Let's see the second part now. He then said that while he was about it, he would see to the chain for me and at once began taking off the gear case. I did try to dissuade him. Dissuade means to persuade someone not to take particular action. I did try to dissuade him from that. I told him what an experienced friend of mine once said to me solemnly. Solemnly means in a formal and dignified manner. If anything goes wrong with your gear case, sell the machine and buy a new one. It comes cheaper. So the person said that he will see the chain for the narrator, for the author and he began to take the gear case, take off the gear case. The narrator tried to persuade him not to do so and he also shared his experience. Once a friend of his told him that if anything goes wrong with the gear case of the cycle, you should sell the machine away because a new, will be, a new machine will be cheaper, cheaper than it. So if gear case is gone, the whole machine is gone. He said people talk like that who don't who understand nothing about machine. Nothing is easier than taking off a gear case. On that the person said that people say like that because they don't understand anything uh, about the machine and taking off gear case is very easy and nothing is easier than that. I had to confess he was right. In less than five minutes he had the gear case in two pieces lying on the path and was groveling for screws. He said it was always a mystery to him the way screws disappeared. So the narrator had to confess that this person was right because he easily took off the gear case within less than five minutes and uh, it was into two pieces in front of him lying on the path and then he started looking for the screws. And he also told that the person also told that uh, how these screws disappear. It was always a mystery for him. Common sense continued to whisper to me. Stop him before he does any more mischief. You have a right to protect your own property from the ravages of a lunatic. Ravages means damages. Lunatic means mad person. Take him up by the scruff. Scruff is the back part of person's neck. Scruff of the neck and kick him out of the gate. 
So the narrator's common sense was telling him, was whispering in his ear that you should stop this person before he does any more mischief. You have all the right to protect your own thing from the damages this mad person is causing to it. You can pull him by the back part of his neck and kick him out of your gate. But I am weak when it comes to hurting other people's feeling and I let him muddle on. Muddle on means mix up things. But narrator was not good at hurting anyone's feeling, saying no to anybody. And he let this person mix up or mess up with his cycle. He gave up looking for rest of the screws. He said screws had a knack of turning up when you least expected them and that now he would see to the chain. He was looking for the screws but after some time he stopped looking for the screws and then he said that screws uh, has a tendency of uh, coming in front of you when you least expect them. He tightened it till it would not move. Next he loosened it until it was twice as loose as it was before. Then he said he had better think about getting the front wheel back into its place. So this person he was messing up with the chain now. First he tightened it so much that it did not move and then he loosened it so much that it was twice as loose as it was before. And then uh, after that he told the narrator that uh, it's better that we get working on the wheel back and put it at its place. I had the fork open and he worried with the wheel. At the end of 10 minutes, I suggested. So the fork of the cycle was open and then he was messing up with the wheels. And when 10 minutes of, were over, the narrator suggested he should hold the fork and then I should handle the wheel and we changed places. So the narrator suggested that uh, the fork, the person should hold the fork of the cycle and uh, he himself will handle the wheel. And then these two people, they changed their places. They came at each other's place. At length, we did get the thing into position and the moment it was in position, he burst out laughing. I said, what's the joke? He said, well, I am an ass. So after some time, they did uh, succeed to put the wheel at its position. And when it was done, the person started laughing and the narrator asked him, what is the joke? And the person said that I am an ass. That means I am such a stupid. It was the first thing he had said that made me respect him. I asked him what had led him to the discovery. So the narrator felt that it is the first thing that this person has said which was actually true about him. And the narrator out of curtsy said what had made him think so. He said we have forgotten the balls. And then he said that we have forgotten to put the balls at their place. I looked for my hat. It was lying topsy-turvy in the middle of the path. Topsy-turvy means upside down. And we have seen that the narrator had put the balls in his hat. And when he looked for the hat, it was lying upside down on the middle of the path. He was of cheerful disposition. Disposition means nature. This person was of cheerful, cheerful nature, happy nature. He said, well, we must put back all we can find and trust the providence. Providence means protective care of God or nature. So he said that well we should put all the things we can find back and just leave it to the nature to work. We found 11. We fixed 6 on one side and 5 on the other and half an hour later the wheel was in its place again. It need hardly be added that it really did wibble now. A child might have noticed it. He said it would do for the present. They were looking for the ball bearings and finally they found 11. They fixed 6 on one side and 5 on the other. And half an hour later, they were able to put the wheel also at its place again. And now the wheel actually wobbled. Even a child might have noticed that it was wobbling. And the person said that for present, it will wobble. I said, watching you do this is of real use to me. It is not only your skill that fascinates me. It is your, your cheery confidence in yourself, your inexplicable hopefulness that does me good. Inexplicable means that can't be explained, mysterious. So the author told this person that watching you do this with a cycle was really of use to him. And uh, watch, uh, uh, not only his skill fascinated him, but his confidence in himself and his mysterious hopefulness that did good to him. This encouraged, thus encouraged, he set to work to refix the gear case. He stood the bicycle against the house and worked from the offside. Then he stood it against a tree and worked from the onside. So he was the person was encouraged by these words of the author and he started working on the bicycles, uh, fixing the gear case again. First he stood, he kept the bicycle against the house and 
worked on it from the other side then he placed the bicycle against the tree and then worked from the on side of the bicycle then i held it for him while he lay on the ground with his head between the wheels and worked at it from below and dropped oil upon him then the narrator held the bicycle for him and he laid below the bicycle and even and started working on it and even oil dropped upon him then he took it away from me and doubled himself across it till the till he lost his balance and slid over on to his head and then he took the bicycle uh, to him and doubled it that means fixed him across uh, fixed the bicycle across himself till he lost the ba balance of the uh, balance over the bicycle and slid over fell down on his head so this is a, a humorous activity going on between the bicycle and the person then he lost his temper and tried bullying the thing the bicycle i was glad to see showed spirit now this person was messing up with bicycle and then he lost his temper he got he lost his patience and he tried to overpower it bully it and the bicycle uh, the the narrator was glad to see that even the bicycle was in high spirits and the subsequent proceeding degenerated into little else than a rough and tumble fight between him and the machine degenerated means was reduced to now the thing which was happening between this person and uh, the bicycle it actually reduced to a little fight between man and the machine one moment the bicycle would be on the gravel path and he on top of it the next the position would be reverse so for one mom moment the bicycle would be on the ground and this person on top of it and next moment the position would be reverse that means this person on the ground and bicycle on top of him he on the gravel path and the bicycle on him now he would be standing flushed with victory the bicycle firmly fixed between his legs but his triumph would be short lived by a sudden quick movement it would free itself and turning upon him hit him sharply over the head with one of its handle so one moment he would be standing there uh, thinking that he has got victory over the bicycle but this victory this triumph would be very short because all of a sudden with a quick movement the bicycle would free itself from his uh, grasp grasp and then it would hit this person and uh, with one of its handle so there was a little fight going on between machine and the man at a quarter to one dirty and disheveled disheveled means made dirty cut and bleeding he said i think that will do and rose and wiped his brow so at quarter to one all uh, dirty and tired cut and bleeding this person said that i think that that will do that means i think whatever he has fixed is enough for now and he rose he got up and he wiped himself the bicycle looked as if it also had had enough of it which had received more most punishment it would have been difficult to say i took him into the back kitchen where so far as possible he cleaned himself then i sent him back now the bicycle was also looking that as if it has taken enough from this person who has received more punishment the bicycle or the person it was difficult to say because both were looking totally exhausted totally in improper position totally uncomfortable now narrator took him to the back kitchen and there as far as possible this person cleaned himself and then narrator sent this person to his home back so the story is by jerome k jerome it is shortened abridged means shortened it's a humorous funny story so did you like the story children now we have question answers of the chapter you can pause the video and go through the question answers so in this story the narrator and author are same author is the person who writes the story and narrator is a person who is a character in the story who tells the story so jerome k jerome is the narrator as well as author in the story that is why in the story i have used somewhere i have used author somewhere i have used narrator So this was about the story students I hope you have liked it do comment and tell me I will see you in my next video till then bye bye